Well, hey there, everyone. We're going to cover how to bulk load Amazon Redshift from Stream Sets. And this is the first video of two. In this video, we're going to go over all of the required setup in order to load up Redshift. So I'll go pretty quickly. This video assumes that you have familiarity with the technologies involved here. Also, it assumes that you have the written instructions for each step of this tutorial. So this is more of a review than a step-by-step -step guide. Let's start off with Redshift. As you'll see in the upper left here, I'm at the Redshift dashboard in the AWS console. As far as clusters go, I just have one, and this was set up really according to the default. I didn't do anything, anything special for it. Um, it's, it's pretty straightforward to set this up if it's your first time. So after creating a cluster and having it available, we need to connect in order to run some SQL. I'm using the SQL Workbench and follow the instructions according to Amazon. All I really needed to do was, uh, man if you click Manage Drivers here in the lower left, I needed to upload the driver for Amazon Redshift. And after I did that, I was able to configure just a few things, the URL and then the username and password, of course. So after doing that, I was able to connect. And once I connected, I came up here to File and I opened the SQL or the DDL that should have accompanied this video. And I have that all loaded now. This will create the destination tables from our MySQL source here to Redshift. So I ran these statements and after doing so, I hit the commit button up here in the top and was able then in my public schema to see all the created tables. All right, so we have Redshift now set up um, and we need to do a couple more things. First, let's cover the MySQL side of things. For that, I have another client called SQL Pro and I followed the instructions according to the MySQL site on the sample employees database. Again, not much to see here. Um, six tables, data loaded. Um, you can see the structure. Um, this will be our source for this tutorial. Not much to see here. Let's move on to another aspect of the tutorial that is S3. We're going to land data in S3 and then copy it over into Redshift. And this is as recommended from Amazon. So in order to do that step, we need an S3 bucket, of course. Nothing special. I created this bucket here with the access wide open for purposes of this tutorial. All right, so Redshift S3 uh, MySQL. Let's take a look at Data Collector. So I have Data Collector running here. There's a couple of things that need to be uploaded in order for the tutorial to work. If we go in the upper left, we've got this package manager. We need to upload down to the lower left, left now. Um, we need to upload a couple of the JDBC drivers. As you can see here, I've already done so. To upload it in your environment, click in the upper right here, install external libraries. Associate it with the default of JDBC stage library. Browse to your jar location. So for example, if I was uploading the Redshift jar, I would simply point to the location of my file system and hit upload. I've already done that, so I'm not going to do it. But after you upload, you will be prompted to restart data collector. You can simply cancel out of that and then upload the MySQL driver if you choose and then restart data collector. And that should be it. You should be all ready for the next step, which is importing the sample pipeline, configuring it for your environment, and then running it. We'll do that in the next video.